Hey guys, this is Heinkuber and today I will show you 5 things that you have to stop doing because they ruin your Mega Minx times. If you don't want to watch the whole video and just a summary of it, just pause the video here. But if you want me to go in more detail with each point, then keep on watching. Number 1. Incorrect Grip There are many different ways to grip a Mega Minx because of the 12 sides, but there is only one correct way to grip it. You should always hold it with your pinky on the bottom, your thumb in the front and your ring finger in the back. This way, the cube can rest on your pinky whilst your thumb and ring finger stabilizes the cube. If you didn't hold the cube like this, then in the beginning it will hurt your pinky, but you will have to fight through this discomfort if you want to be able to do advanced finger tricks. If you learn how to grip the cube correctly, then you will be able to do any finger trick. If you solve the cube on the table, then it doesn't really matter how you grip it since the table takes the place of your pinky, because the table holds the cube, so it doesn't really matter how you hold it. Number 2. Excessive Rotations This is by far the most important thing to avoid in my opinion. One rotation doesn't take that long, but when you do them excessively then it starts to add up. Rotations on a Mega Minx takes longer than let's say on a 3x3 because of the grip. So it's best to avoid them. There are many different ways to avoid rotations. One simple one is to insert pairs in the back. So instead of rotating all the way to the back, you just insert it like this. Another common way to reduce the rotations is to use more F moves in your solution. So for instance, in this case, instead of rotating and pairing it up like this, you can just use these F moves to pair them like that. And that avoids one rotation. But the most helpful way to reduce the amount of rotations is to improve your look ahead. Because if you don't have a proper look ahead, then you'll just rotate, rotate looking for pieces. And personally, the way I usually do this is uh, once I'm solving a pair, Whilst I, I'm solving the pair, I'll always look for one corner piece. So for instance here, um, to solve this pair is really easy, but um, I will see this corner piece and I'll know it in our back here. So as soon as I solve this pair, I will look for the edge piece. So I'll solve this and then I'll quickly look around and I see the edge piece is here and then I can just do the next pair. And I keep on doing that, searching for one corner piece, one corner piece. You can search for both, but it's really risky to look for both because the one corner piece could be here and the edge piece could be here. So you usually look for corner pieces because they are much easier to spot and to move around the puzzle. You can also reduce your rotations by finding more efficient ways to solve pieces. So for instance, if I want to solve these two, I could just take them out, rotate and pair them, or I can use a much more efficient way of solving them like this without any rotations. And the only way you'll be able to do this is either by doing slow solves or watching more experienced Mega Minx solvers walkthrough solves to find more efficient ways to pair them. Another way to reduce your rotations is to better learn your CP algorithms and to better recognize it. For instance, in this case, I know that these two headlights are here, so I know I'm going to have to do the algorithm from this side. So instead of rotating twice and then doing the algorithm, I can just do a YouTube and then I know after I do the algorithm I have to do a YouTube Prime to finish it off, like that. Just so that you know how much of an effect rotations have, let's say for the sake of argument it takes 0.3 seconds for rotation. And let's say you rotate one time excessively per pair, so one time too many, and once for each second star piece. Then you will have a total time wasted of 6 seconds because of the 15 pairs and 10 star pieces, which is actually a lot. Trust me, if you reduce your rotations, your times will go down drastically. Number 3. Doing one extra move. There's a very specific F2L case that I constantly see people do incorrectly and it shows up a lot. And it's this one. Let's say for instance you want to pair these pieces and you want to insert it at the bottom. And what people usually do is they pair them, they bring them all the way to the bottom and insert them. But there's a one move shorter solution that you will find right here. So you pair them. But then instead of bringing it all the way down, you do an F prime and insert them like that. Remember, this is just a concept, not a specific F2L case. Okay, so for instance, if you have this pair solved at the bottom, what I also used to do is I used to bring it all the way to the, to the bottom. But as you can see now, you can just do an F prime and insert it like that, which is much quicker. And the last form that I quickly want to show, which is also helpful, is for instance, if you have this pair, you want to insert here. Instead of bringing it over here and rotating and inserting, you can again do an F move and then insert it like that. So there's many different ways that this specific F2L case can come up and it's always useful to do that F move because it saves you one move and it actually does save a lot of time. Number 4. Pausing at EP. There's nothing worse than having a great solve but pause for 2 seconds once you do EP. There's a very easy way to predict what you will have to do in EP while you're doing CO. 
Before you start the CO algorithm, look at one edge piece and track that edge piece. So for instance here, I'm going to look at this pink. And once I do the algorithm, I see it's going to be right here. So I can immediately do a U prime to put it in its correct place and then look for the second piece. But if you don't want to do that, and instead you want to do, put in more effort to do a more precise way of doing this, you can go through each of your CO algorithms and look for one piece, one edge piece, what it does to it. So for instance, when I, once I do this soon, I know this piece will end up right here. So I know after I do this soon, I, I automatically will have to do a U to align one piece. Like that. The reason that this is so helpful is because once you have one edge piece correctly aligned, then it will be much easier to look for the second piece than if you had zero pieces and then you have to look for both of them. So it actually saves you a lot of recognition. Number five, using only 3x3 FTR algorithms. There's a video where I explain the most important mindset you need to have to improve with Megaminx, and you can watch the video right here. But in short, all it says is that you need to think of a Megaminx as a new puzzle and not as a 3x3. 3x3 F2L is very limited because it only has 6 sides, whilst a Mega Minx has 12 sides, so you have more freedom with what you can do to pair pieces. So I would advise you to forget 3x3 and learn new ways to pair pieces. I'm just going to show one example to illustrate my point. So for instance, in this case, you could just do the 3x3 way of taking the piece to the top layer and then solving it. Because on a 3x3, three three, you, you most likely won't be able to break up the star piece. So you won't do R2s too much uh, in the solution. But in this case, you can, because there's no star here. So in this uh, solution, you can do an R2 to set them up, and then just pair them like that. So you have to get out of that 3x3 three three mindset. That is one of the most, if not the most important thing for Mega Megamings. I hope this video helps you get rid of those bad habits and if you have any questions or any complaints feel free to ask them in the comment section below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel and peace.